Hi, it's Jen Janik from the band Blind Revision. Uh, lately, we've been getting a lot of questions about what our new EP of White and Gray actually means and what the lyrics are about, so I'm just going to talk about uh, the concept EP today. Each song represents a different lobe of the brain. Um, we knew we wanted to write a concept EP for a really long time. We really like the idea of sticking with a the theme. Um, so we wanted to do that. Uh, each song, as well as representing one lobe of the brain, also represents um, a certain demon that some people have to deal with. So, for example, um, the first song, Parietal Pressure, represents the parietal lobe of the brain and also the demon of sensitivity or being sensitive. Um, so basically the song or the EP in general follows one narrator or subject um, throughout their lifetime. So in the first song this person is uh, feeling a lot of tension, feeling a lot of sensitivity. Um, they're younger at the time so they're more vulnerable to certain things in the world. Um, and somebody wrongs them. There's a lyric, I can touch, can taste your lie. The parietal lobe of the brain deals with um, sensory things like touch, taste as well. Um, and that's where that is from, in case you're wondering. Um, and ultimately, the narrator ends up feeling a lot of tension, as I said, and toward the end of the song, it does get a little more uh, post-hardcore sounding, I guess you could say. The song starts off very, very kind of sweet and innocent and melodic and then gets very metal toward the end. Um, and that was on purpose, just to show that this person is starting off young and sort of innocent and pure and then as time goes on, they start sort of hating the world and going through all these different emotions. The next song is called Temporal Mercenary and this deals with anxiety, so the demon of anxiety. Um, and the temporal lobe also deals with everything auditory, so everything that you can hear. Um, and in the lyrics there are a couple of little things that allude to uh, the act of listening and things like that. Um, I wanted to talk about anxiety and fear in this song, specifically the fear of death. Um, and feeling like you're fighting, like a struggle. Um, if you suffer from anxiety, usually people will say that they feel like there's this internal struggle, um, almost like a battle going on, like you're fighting with yourself. And so this narrator uh, is going through that at this point in time. The amygdala of the brain is also in the temporal lobe, and that does deal with fear, um, anxiety, things like that. So I think it was a perfect match for the song. The next song is called Frontal Seeker, and this is about the frontal lobe of the brain. I was just trying to convey the, basically, the demon of addiction. Um, and so this narrator is now using that to cope with all the other issues in their life, like the anxiety that we talked about. There's a part in the song where I talk about dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter that is involved in addiction. In this song, I'm also using religion to allude to how it feels for some people to be high. Um, some people say that they feel like they are reaching God or can see God. And so I wanted to explore that as well in this song. The next song is Occipital Covenant. And while love can be wonderful, and we usually think of it that way, this song deals with the demon of love. Uh, love is not always a good thing for the person. In general, this song is about being in love with or being attracted to someone or something that is bad for you. And that's exactly what happened to the subject in the EP. Um, this person feels that they are in love with some someone that is bad for them and that even though they love them, they can't really completely be with them. There are a lot of little lyrical sprinkles that I've put in here um, alluding to the occipital lobe, which is um, used in vision and basically seeing. Uh, so, for example, um, 
We usually use the term love at first sight when we're describing someone that we fall in love with. Um, a lot of people say that that's how they knew that they were the one. So I wanted to use this to represent the occipital lobe because it's how we see. There's a line, with you I'll soar with wings like iris. That's a play on words um, because of course the iris is an anatomical part of the eye. I also mentioned vasopressin in the song, which is a hormone that is typically referred to as the monogamy hormone. Um, it's released a lot when two people are um, together physically. Obviously some people have more levels of vasopressin than others, but it is considered the monogamy hormone. It makes you feel really connected specifically to that person. Dilate my pupils, I'll be your smartest student it is also a play on words. Um, a pupil is a part of the eye, but it can also represent a student. Belladonna uh, in Italian means beautiful woman, but this was also a plant that the ancient Italians would actually use to dilate their pupils. So big eyes were considered very beautiful and attractive, and women would actually inject like little eye drops um, in their eyes to make their eyes look bigger. So that's what that part of the song is referring to. Ashes is the last song and you might uh, notice that it's not represented by any lobe of the brain. So this song does kind of stand on its own a little bit. This basically represents the end of the world as the narrator knows it and it is up to your interpretation whether or not the world is actually ending or if it's just seems like the world is psychologically ending for this person because of everything that they've been through. Um, when we do this on stage, we die at the end. And uh, if you've been to a Blinder Vision show, you know that we all sort of fall <laughs> down to the ground. Um, and the guitarists will keep playing, uh, lying down and everything. But we just, we do that, first of all, because it's fun but also um, just to symbolize, you know, it is the end of the world for this character that we created. Um, and in our future music that we write, we would like to continue doing concepts possibly with the same character and maybe you'll learn more about them. Uh, that's a little up in the air right now. We're still not sure if we're gonna continue with that route, but we might. Um, so if we do that, you'll get to know that character a little bit more. There is a lot of Latin in this song, Ashes. Um, favila is a word that's repeated a lot, which means ashes in Latin. And I chose Latin because um, I do think that the EP has some uh, religious overtones in terms of talking about like um, the subject talking about God and feeling like you know, please forgive me for the things that I've done, that sort of thing. Also, this song um, uses more of an operatic style of vocals, which is very different from all the other songs on the EP, um, and that is used sometimes in like church choirs and things like that, so I also wanted to make that connection as well. There is a part in the beginning of the song where the subject is trying to sort of bargain with God, um, so that they, like, they're not ready to die, basically. Peccata mundi is Latin for sins of the world. Mea vita means my life, and pacem means peace. Requiem is the Latin word for rest, and that word is used a lot in a lot of music, um, if you're familiar with old music <laughs> like I am. I used to sing in Latin when I was in um, a chorus before, so I, I have a lot of experience singing in Latin, um, so I know that might seem strange to put that into our music, but I, ironically, I think it fit really well for that song, so I threw it in there. I think that when someone is close to death or feels that they um, are in a very dark place, such as the way this character would feel at this point, um, I think it's only natural for somebody to think about God or whatever they do believe in or whether or not they believe in something and maybe making a decision at that point if they do believe in a higher power. So I thought that that made sense for this song. 
If you listen to the lyrics, uh, the way the EP goes in order, um, it's not really completely clear if the subject uh, has severe mental illness by this point and this really is the end of the world or if it's really all in the person's head. So I'll leave that up to your interpretation. Um, and if you're interested, Blind Revision is based in Rhode Island, but we do play a lot of shows all along the East Coast now. Um, you can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash blindrevision, Twitter at twitter.com slash blindrevision, or Instagram, instagram.com slash blindrevision, and we hope to see you at a show someday. And our EP of White and Gray is available on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, CD Baby, pretty much anything you could think of. Um, yeah, Bandcamp. Check it out. If you have bought our CD already, thank you so much. <laughs> um, we work really hard. Every musician that I know works really, really hard. And trust me when I say we do really appreciate it. We make music for the fun of it. We genuinely love making art. Um, any any type of art really, but especially music and you know without your support it just wouldn't be the same. We wouldn't be able to tour, we wouldn't be able to do all those things. So every time you buy a CD, every time you buy a t-shirt, just know that that is where your money's going. Um, it's going directly to helping us tour or helping us fund our new music that we're working on now. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it.